G'day everyone, welcome to Monetize Your Mission, all about how to uncover your greatest gift, make money doing what you love, and make the difference and contribution that you want to have be made to your family, your friends, your community, and beyond. And today, I've asked a particular special guest to come on because throughout this whole series, I've been showcasing people who either have an online presence or an offline presence. And my guest today has a combination of both. And that's what's really juicy because it's migrating or merging the two worlds together and how effectively it can work by being able to just do that. And so today I've got with me Dr. Heather Denniston. And Heather is a chiropractor specializing in pediatrics and pregnancy. So she does consulting, speaking. She's right now on holidays, which is so beautiful of her to join us on this summer. <laughs> She's on holidays in Chicago and I wanted to grab uh, Heather because it's very rare that someone can bring the two worlds together as one, especially in a space where something like chiropractic, it's usually a brick and mortar business, a physical practice. And I yes. wanted to bust that myth. So Heather, welcome to Monetize Your Mission. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. I'm very excited uh, both for this and to enjoy the other speakers that you've had on. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to first start, Heather, because you're a chiropractor. And for me, when I think of chiropractors, I think of a practice, I think of a shop front. Yeah. I want to talk about your specific practice because it's so unique. But before I do, how did the passion for the work that you're doing right now, how did that begin? The passion for what I'm doing right now and... Uh, I have had a chiropractic practice for 20 years and in the last couple years I really got called to spread that a little bit wider and with a brick and mortar business of course that can be difficult to do and so as a chiropractor I have a passion for wellness and for health, nutrition, exercise, we tend to embody mindset and I wanted to expose other folks outside my little community to uh, the opportunity of learning more about that. And so I constantly was getting this itch to start an online presence of writing and potentially speaking nationally regarding nutrition, health, exercise, and also the power of chiro chiropractic as well. Beautiful. And why chiropractic? Why not something different? Why not medicine? Why not GP? Why did you choose that particular field? Chiropractic is a very unique profession. Uh, most of us fall into it from having had a personal experience with chiropractic. And uh, chiropractic is, is beautiful because you can own a business. Um, there is great opportunity to impact a large community of people and change their health, transform how they feel about living and nutrition and exercise. And so it was close to my heart. I had had a lot of injuries as an athlete and uh, in a particular job, I really hurt my back and I was taken to a chiropractor and I was just sold because of the just amazing power of putting your hands on somebody and transforming their health in such a short amount of time with very little intervention or repercussions or negative outcomes. So that's, that's why I uh, got interested in it. Wow, that's interesting. And did you start off with that brick and mortar business in the beginning? I did. I started as an associate. I'm a big advocate for always have people around you that are a few steps ahead of you on the journey. And so I found a doctor that I thought was doing it well, and I aligned myself with him so I could learn as much as possible. And then I did branch out on my own, and I had my own office for 15 years with massage therapists and, and staff. And it's only just recently that I have... I handed that practice over to two lovely sisters from Wisconsin so that I could pursue these other projects because I feel so strongly about my need to get out there and really explore the opportunities of uh, this online blog that I'm writing and the speaking and the presenting and what that might look like. That's, that's excellent. And I think what's really juicy about that, Heather, is that it's the evolution of that passion where you started as one thing and it's kind of evolved now as you're doing the writing and the speaking and getting out there to a greater reach. 
How do you currently now manage it so that you have a blog? You do, I know, and I know you were telling me just before that you were on a speaking engagement and you thought, I'll go for a little break as well, a little holiday, which is the best yes. thing about being in the entrepreneurial space. How do you break up your time now and how are you actually, what are the channels that you're working in? Yeah, you know, Rita, I find that I, I do some coaching with some other uh, chiropractors and business people. And that is one of the biggest questions is once you get into the entrepreneurial space, uh, the space where you're not in a nine to five, that's one of the biggest questions I think that can define successful or not successful. And that is how do you divide up your time both so that you're balanced, but that you also are uh, doing quality, impactful a way, way of spending your time. So I always, I'm, I'm a planner and I have learned to be even more of a planner because when you are in the entrepreneur space, you often are wearing different hats. You have different roles in your own company. Where do I spend my time? And so being very conscious and intentional the night before I spend a lot of time planning out the entire next day of how I'm going to divide up that time. So certain balls don't get dropped. Um, and then more long-term setting specific goals and action plans to put in place so that you're holding yourself accountable. And that's, I think a big thing with uh, being an entrepreneurial is that there's no one saying, Hey, this is due. It's, it's all on you. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's really an important piece is the planning of your schedule and making sure that you are dividing up your time appropriately. And so as you're doing that, why, do, I mean, for you to come away from a brick and mortar practice and come into another, yeah. another, I guess, space, what motivated you to do that? Was that just because you wanted to be able to speak? Is it because of the passion for speaking? Is it because you wanted to explore other clientele that you couldn't do in a specific location? Yeah, that's a great question. I, it's a combination of things. I started an online blog called Well Fit and Fed as an avenue for my patients to have somewhere to go to get really clear, well-researched, um, reliable articles on everything from fitness to nutrition. And that's how it started. And then the blog really started a life of its own and started taking off. And I became more passionate about it. And I felt like I was being called to do that on a more full-time basis and I can't do that in a situation where you're in a practice from nine to five, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, it needed more of my time. And then also I was at a season in my practice where I found I was mentoring younger chiropractors and I felt like that also was a calling that I couldn't do as well as be in the practice. So I think at times the practice was a great thing. I loved it. I adored it. I loved my practice family and my staff. But when other callings happen and you're being urged and life is leading you in a direction, it's important to listen to that and answer it and move quickly. And I, I did. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. And so uh, it's been an incredible journey and it's just been so rewarding and so fantastic to have this transition happen. And now mm. I'm traveling nationally and I'm doing speaking and writing and, and I'm so passionate about it. And I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning every day. This is all new for me as well. But mm. it's been incredibly rewarding and such a great way to sort of experience this next season of my life. And I, and I love that because you, you, you describe it as the next season of your life. And with this new season, because having uh, the previous model of business that you had, being, in, being a chiropractor, yes. was you get a client, that's the fee, that was the monetization. Now that you're transitioning into the online space, what are the channels of monetization that you're currently employing? Yeah, I, I think it's important to, um, there's a story that my husband recently told me that I just loved from Jim Collins about bullets and cannons. And when you start, are you familiar with that? No, no, okay. I'd love to hear. <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's a great story and it, and it relates well to your question. And that is that when you start an online business, you have a nest egg potentially of, of finances that you can throw at it. Mm -hmm. And instead of firing cannons, which takes up a lot of gunpowder, it's better to aim bullets. And when it hits a mark, you aim the cannon there and fire it. So as an online business person, ex exercising avenues of potential income, of passive sources of flow into your business, I think is essential. And so for myself personally, 
there's a coaching aspect uh, that I have that monetizes. There's advertising, there's affiliate relationships, there is brand representation, and those would be the main sources um, of several different avenues by which I can also generate an income. Lastly, I'm, I forgot one, eBooks and online programs. And so all of those need attention and they're like bullets firing and then saying, okay, this one works well for sort of my style and, and what I'm putting out there. So I'm putting more energy toward that one. Okay. And so that's the space I'm in right now. Beautiful. So that's beautiful. What the, I think there's many ways of monetizing. There's coaching, there's online programs, yes. there's advertising, affiliate relationships. That's pretty, how long did it take you? So if, and I want to just, I guess I'm pre-framing this for someone who has a brick and mortar business and yes. feels called, how long does it take to transition and to build something of an online space to start coaching, to start the affiliate relationships, to start the advertising yeah. revenue coming in? How long does that take? Yeah, Rita, I think for me, it, the reason it took the time it did is because there could have been some footwork I did in the beginning to learn more about online businesses before I engaged. And instead I sort of learned in the trenches and um, there's so many programs like this that you've got going on that are available to learn. And had I to do it over, you know, a year before I sold the practice, I would have been doing more education as far as online passive sources of income, monetizing, understanding how to online market and all of those things. And there's just so much available um, quality information. Mm. So when to answer your question, it's been one year since I've transitioned and I'm very happy with the results, but I think it would have been even a, more of a catapult had I had a little bit more foundation in place. And yeah. so I think that's what, how I would yeah. respond. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent because throughout this series, Heather, I've been asking all the experts, would you have had coaching? Would you have not have had? And the majority, not all of them, but the majority have said definitely because it, that's the acceleration that it's like when you go to university, you know, you, you learn from a professor, a tutor to t learn what they know so that you can build on that. And it's the same in yes. business. I think so too. And, and one of my philosophies is to always have four people around me that are always steps ahead, varying degrees of steps ahead. Yeah. And whether that's a paid coaching relationship or a mentoring relationship or an online, you know, more easily available type relationship, I always want to be nurturing that because it's the movement of learning in this space happens so quickly. Yeah. We constantly need to be supporting each other and, and helping forward. And I'm a big advocate for coaching up and coaching down. So I'm receiving coaching while I'm also passing on what I've yes. just learned. So you don't have to spend yes. so much time doing it. So yes, I absolutely agree. And I think that's such an important part because I mean, as you would know, Heather, that in the nine to five world, People tend to just be complacent because there's not that movement of coaching, of mentoring, of what is possible. And so you yeah. kind of become very comfortable and it's harder to leave the comfort of the nine to five, you know, comfortable paycheck. But in the entrepreneurial space, there are no rules. Yes. And, it's, and because it, it pretty much most people are new when they dive into it, that coaching, that mentoring is just so refreshing because... Someone's been there, done that. And just like you, you've been there, done that. And you're yeah. coaching someone else. This is the journey. This is what you got to watch out for. This is what you need to do and not do. And everyone has their own unique combination of experience and mm -hmm. wisdom. And, and that collectively can speak to an individual in a different way than another person can. Absolutely. And, and, you know, having owned a brick and mortar and now in this space, I have different things to offer than somebody else who maybe did, was, didn't come from that background. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. And so I think you, you constantly need to be meeting people who can speak into your life and help you along your journey a little quicker. And I do think this entrepreneur, entrepreneurial space is a roller coaster, but I've never felt more alive and excited about what I'm doing. Mm. And it is completely such an amazing way to spend your life and experience so many wonderful, wonderful things. And so if you can frame around you the support that you need to get there, it's so yeah. incredible. I 100% I agree. With you. I mean, if we look at your lifestyle right now, you're on holidays, uh, yeah. You did a speaking gig, sorry. You did a speaking gig and then you thought, my girlfriends are going out for a little vac vacation. I might join them. And here you are doing an interview with me. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's that lifestyle that's just incredible. 
Well, and Rita, there was one point in November, and I hadn't been out that long, but I had my feet up in a cafe in Portugal, and I was writing a blog post, and I just thought, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. And and the opportunity to do that sort of laptop lifestyle, mm -hmm. and the choices that you can make and the travel you can do and all, all of the opportunities that it provides is just spellbinding, like spellbound. So it's, it's incredible. And um, yeah, there have been many moments where I've just gone pinch, pinch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ouch, ouch. Yeah. Okay. So, Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, what's, what's interesting, Heather, is I've been speaking to, in this uh, our monetizing mission series, to so many experts, and we've really grilled down on the, like, the lifestyle of what an entrepreneurial life affords one. But I would love to know your opinion. I haven't asked this question of anyone else, but okay. I want to know, yeah, I would love to know because... I guess you've had your own business, brick and mortar, and now you're online. So you've had a huge business experience. Yes. What are the downsides for someone who's watching this and who's looking to accelerate their business or trying to get into one, start one up? What is some of the, because and you're a coach, which is the beauty of this. What is yeah. the downside of sound, starting a business? Like what are the what things that you need to be aware of? Yeah. And, and, Rita, I, I don't think it's for absolutely everybody because mm -hmm. it's an incredible amount of hard work. Mm -hmm. You are never off. It's constantly in your mind. And yes, you get to go on vacation, but while you're on vacation, you're thinking about what's my next blog post? How am I going to launch this new ebook? How am I going to do this? And so yeah. there, there is a constancy about that. Also, I think self, being self-motivating, if there's a lack of that or if there's the inability to do that, the person will struggle. And, and that's where we hire into our weaknesses, right? I know I'm not a detailed person. And as an entrepreneurial now, I have hired absolutely people around me who help me in the details because that could be a deal breaker. Mm. And so the downside is I think you have to become very aware of where you're weak you have to know that it's, it's not nine to five, it's 24 seven, but the discretionary time that you can create for yourself with your choice of where you spend that and how you um, break down your schedule. And I have colleagues in this new business who only work at night and they yeah. have flexibility during the day. And so, you know, it's, it's that. And it's, I think that idea and also working alone a lot of the time some people have a hard time with that mm -hmm. and and so I think those are some of the downsides and of course you know the 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 business piece of it takes some time to get launched up and nine to five there's the paycheck every two weeks and yeah. so the awareness of that and and um but gosh nothing more rewarding and <laughs> that idea of seeing what you've created and, and put it out there and the return on that is just so fulfilling. Isn't it? So. Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, what you, you were just talking right now and when you said, you know, some people work at night, some of your colleagues work at night, some people have, it reminded me of something that Oprah said and someone asked her, well, why is it that you have your own business, that you run your own gig? And she said, you know, I would rather do what I do and fail than be controlled by someone else. Yeah. And that's just the entrepreneurial, I think, identity that we commonly share with entrepreneurs yes. that we just, we've got to do our, we're not employable. <laughs> we're just, yeah. We're our own and people. For sure. And I think off that it's, it's define and pursue your own dreams or you'll be working for someone else's. Mm. And, uh, and so I think that's a big part of the space is that you're fulfilling that deep, deep inner purpose in your life and I think sometimes when you're working nine to five uh, there's an opportunity where you are working for somebody else's purpose and so to find yours and unleash that and put it into a situation where you can monetize and you can create a business that is beautiful and that that's an, an incredible situation yeah I absolutely and I it's find it interesting that when you say when you can find something because you found your passion for being a chiropractor when you had an injury that you had to see one, you thought, wow, this is incredible. I'd love to do that. Prior to that, were you doing, were you in a corporate job that you didn't enjoy? What was it like before having found what you do right now? Yeah, uh, I found it early. So uh, when I was in college, but 
it's, it's redefined. And so this new business, I, I don't know that when I was in chiropractic practice in the early days, I would have said, oh yeah, I'm going to be writing an online health and fitness blog. But I'm, I, I keep my eyes very open to life's leadings and I listen to the signs and I'm constantly searching. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people get into that day to day and they stop looking around and they stop looking for what are, what are some opportunities that I can have to make my life richer and, and then constantly um, uh, exploring sort of adventure and learning new things and, you know, continuing to do that. Yeah. I think that brings passion into your life. And I, I do think you're right, Rita, that many people that passion just starts to die and, and mm -hmm. decrease when we're stuck in a job that maybe is not as fulfilling as it could be. And again, when you're working for somebody else instead of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. And I, and I think um, one of the things that reasons people feel that way is because we don't know what else is available or what other opportunities are around, which is why this series is so dear to my heart, because I want to bring people like yourself, Heather, who have found other ways yeah. And you've taken a profession and you've twisted it around and molded it to suit you. Same profession, yes. but molded it to yourself because it was time. And yes. that's what I wanted to showcase, to bring people like you to so this is how I'm doing it. And when you talk about sitting in Portugal and writing your blog, <laughs> you <know? laughs> I love that. How did you, uh, this is a question that I get quite commonly, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it. How do you find your content? to write about because it, be having a blog, it, it's a consistent effort to be able yeah. to update. It. Where do you get your content from? What's your inspiration to, to keep consistent? Well, what I, what I tell others who are, are trying to write is write what you know, mm. write every day mm. and constantly be reading. And, and you find that that content just comes. It's as long as I follow those three rules, I have, lists and lists of ideas of, for content yeah. and I, I think that's really key and and getting with other other writers other people who do what you do to get inspired by them yeah and and yeah so that's beautiful so write read every day uh, what was read every day yeah right so read read a lot uh, in your in your area of, of what you like to write about and write every day you know, uh, a journalist friend of mine says, writers always write. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's very yeah. true. I think if you are going to be a writer, you're going to um, monetize through, you know, ebooks or, you know, write, you've got to write every day um, to keep that fuel and that, that muscle yes. nice and strong. Yes. And then, uh, and then yet yeah, constantly um, writing what you're passionate about. So I got asked to speak once on a subject. I didn't, why it wasn't it passionate about, but I chose to take the speaking event and it just wasn't, it didn't go well yeah. because it wasn't from my heart and mm -hmm. it wasn't what I was most passionate about. And, and so I think that's, you know, constantly trying to find things that you really enjoy and, and light you up then it pours out of you more easily. That's, you see, that's, that's, that's key because was there any ever a time where you felt the profession that you're in was not a passion? Did you ever question it at any time? Uh, not the profession, but the idea of full-time clinical practice oh. changed uh, to mm -hmm. the point that I was like, oh, I can see this. I, I'm not connecting with this as I once did. Mm -hmm. And so removing myself from that to this new format of a lifestyle was absolutely essential. And I, and I think it goes back to listening to life's leadings. If you start feeling itchy or uncomfortable in the situation you're in, that's for a reason. Mm. And it's important to listen to that and act. But Rita, you know, going back to talking about, you know, the, the, the idea of change, it requires a lot of bravery. Mm. And I think that's hard for folks sometimes is to take that step. It's terrifying. Mm. And, but boy, the, 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 you see more color, you get more energized. You just, the experience that you have of life when you make those scary steps is just such a different experience than staying where you're at. Yeah, because he, absolutely, because you, as you're growing, as you're stretching, you get to see, as you say, the colors more vividly. You get yes. To feel things more deeply. I, I, I yes. couldn't agree more with it. Um, I wanted to know if, if you were going to 
advise someone to, and I know you're a business coach, which is folks, Heather is a business coach for people who are starting to have their own chiropractic practice and a general business coach as well, which is what yes. I really want to ask this question to yourself, please, uh, Heather, is what sure. would you recommend step one, step two, step three, if I want to go and have an online presence, maybe have a product or a service, or what would be your key? If I have an ID, how would I best go about implementing that into the world? Okay. Well, I think the idea has to start with determining the viability of the idea. Mm -hmm. And so researching demand, who else is doing what you're doing? What's wrong with all, what's already being done? Can you make it better? Is it fight? Does it financially make sense not to just produce it, but to market it? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and financially makes sense means just for that particular person. We, you know, we're all coming from different mm -hmm. um, available funds to promote a product or, a, or a, you know, an ebook or whatever that is. So I think going through that initial process, there's a saying called uh, the seven P's proper prior planning prevents poor performance, right? <laughs> uh, P, poor performance. Well done, performance. Heather. Well done. Yeah. Uh, but so, so that, that initial investment properly prior planning mm -hmm. the idea and really taking a look at it before you launch it. But once you decide, yeah, this is good. I think this is going to fly. Then I looking at, okay, how, w whether it's an app or an ebook or, you know, whatever online choice, we have to spend time researching the business of that. Mm -hmm. And so understanding, okay, how are apps marketed? How, what's the design, you know, what, you know, and learning the business end of it, which I think a lot of idea people and, and entrepreneurs sometimes kind of go, Oh, that's kind of boring. I don't want to, I want to work on my idea. Mm -hmm. And, and so taking the time and forcing yourself to do the due diligence of attending, you know, when I sold my practice in May, I lined up three different blogging conferences across the nation wow. that I just went to because I knew I needed that business information. I needed to understand, you know, how to online market and and all of those things, I needed an immersion. Yes. And, and so I created that. And I think, you know, when you have that great idea, that is fantastic. But we have to understand the framework around producing and launching uh, just as much as we understand how this idea is going to come to fruition. Yeah. So, And I think, Heather, you hit just a beautiful, just markedly, uh, the nail on the head there, when you said that, yes, your idea may be, you may be passionate about your idea, but you need to learn the business side of it. And yeah. that's one of the first lessons I learned when I got into business is you're a businesswoman or man first, then yes. you are passionate about whatever it is that you do. Because if you're passionate, but no one knows about it, well, yeah, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. It's what you do on the side. But you have to For sure. craft of what you're saying is to market, be able to sell, be able to be immerse yourself in how that's happening. Yeah. So you can yeah. go and serve your passion. Yes, for sure. And, and way less heartache if the time is spent, you know, preparing on the front end uh, before you launch something and go, oh, I didn't know that I had to do that. You know, so I, I think that's, that's really key and very, very important. Absolutely. I think, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, please. No, I was just, I was just going to say there's, I had a coach who taught me about, you know, you have this great idea and, and you're pursuing it and you feel like you're not getting there. And he described the physical concept of when you go to jump to a next level, you first have to squat. And so that, that idea of having patience in the process and waiting because everything takes longer than you hope it will and not giving up and keep going for it. If it's feeling right and you recheck and you recheck and you recheck and it's like, no, this is, this is still a good idea. This is still right. Be aware of that squatting period before you before it becomes a reality and your idea launches and things start happening. And I think a lot of people quit before that happens. And my encouragement is stay the course and really be aware of the fact that, no, this is a good idea. It's just going to take a little bit of time and, and, and that patience is essential. I love that <clears throat> metaphor. You have to crouch down. To squat, yeah. Squat down. To get to you I, I love that. That's... I know. I love that too. I wish it was mine, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Yeah. I think that's so key. And I think it's such a beautiful visual metaphor for the, what business is. But I think, you know what, Heather, I think it's the same in your career. You, you, yes. know, you become CEO when you start a position. It takes quite some time to build up. It's just 
it's social proof. We've seen other people doing a nine to five, so we know it. But in the entrepreneurial world, you're supposed to just, you know, snap your fingers yeah. and happen. It's just like you say, it takes longer than you think. So just be patient. Yeah. Yeah. And I think celebrating those baby steps and, you know, the, those little tiny wins along the way, we have to really acknowledge them because as an entrepreneur, in those initial stages, yeah. you don't get other people going, yay, great job. This is a great product when it, you know, it's just those little, and so really taking the time to go, okay, I got 7,000 followers on Facebook following my blog, or I, you know, or I, my ebook is halfway done or celebrate it because it's all part of the path. It's part of yeah. the process and you're learning along the way. Yeah. Beautifully said Heather, because you don't have someone a manager, a coworker to pat right. you on the back and say, well done. You do need to acknowledge it and see it for what it is. Yes. The, the, the distance and the milestone that you've overcome. And which brings me to the point that you've been so generous with us, uh, with our viewers, that you're going to give us a free gift. Um, oh, yeah. I'd love for you to explain what that's about. You bet. Yes, I am going to give your lovely listeners two complimentary coaching sessions. Wow. And that is a third. 30 minute phone call uh, and they can you know, spread them out how they want to. And that will also involve some unlimited email access. And I really would just like to take a couple of your listeners and help them frame up their ideas and move them in the right direction. And so I'd love to offer that. And then with that, I'm going to go ahead and give them my online uh, ebook, the three day reset, because as entrepreneurs, we have to take as much care of our own personal health so that we can be just in such good shape to make these business ideas fly, but we've got to take care of ourselves too. So I'm a big advocate of personal and professional health. Um, those two are very linked. And so that's what I'm going to be giving. I'm very excited about it. That's so super generous, guys. I mean, that's, that's Heather's personal time that she's doing sessions. So I would so completely... Highly recommend that you go and the link to that is going to be in the email that we've sent to you as well as you're watching this video. Next to this video, there is a link. Click on that link and you'll get access to Heather's awesome, awesomely generous gifts. Uh, I, want to, um, I want to, Heather, just find, ask a couple of more questions because one of the things that I, I get asked quite a bit is now that you've launched and you're doing the work that you're doing. What is your mission behind it? What is your purpose behind the work that you're doing that keeps you in the game? Okay, so when I first started, and I would recommend this to anyone because I think many of us struggle with our why purpose. What, you know, what are, why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, Simon Sinek has a, a lovely online course called Start With Why. It's not very expensive. It doesn't take that long, but it, the end result is a, is, a, is a purpose statement. And so for me, I, keep, I go back to that, and that is to ignite passion and inspire first steps in others so that they can realize their true potential. Mm -hmm. And, and so that, that inspiring and igniting first steps, because lots of people can get passionate about something, but it's taking those steps to mm -hmm. actually bring it to fruition. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm having a bit of a down day, or I feel like things maybe aren't producing as quickly as they could, I always come back to them and I say, am I inspiring? And, and I've, have I made anybody make steps towards their, their goals and their passions and their potential? And the answer is yes. And so I can keep coming back to, okay, I can, I can keep going. I can keep doing what I, what I know is right. That's, that's beautiful. So it's really coming down. And it was Simon Sinek, correct? Simon Sinek's program, Start With Why. It's, oh. it's a nice online program. It's, yeah, it's great. It just helps you really refine down you know, what is your purpose? What, what is, why are you doing, why do you get out of bed in the morning? Yeah, yeah I love that. I love yeah. that. And yours is to really be able to fine tune that for people so that they, they have reason to wake up. So they have a reason to know what they're doing and be a better version of themselves. Yeah. And I just think there's such a disconnect between I am passionate about this, but I don't either know how to make the first steps or I just mm. haven't. And, and so it's to find, okay, how do we bridge that? And so that's really, really key. Wow. that's See, I find that really refreshing because when I think of a chiropractor, Heather, I don't think about having these kinds of discussions. <laughs> I just think about there's a back problem, there's a neck problem. Can we just work yeah. on it? And, kind of, and this is what I think is so juicy about your journey because you've really uh, taken the whole 
the profession that you do and immerse personal development in it. Yes. Uh, it's a, a holistic way of looking at your career, your business and accelerating forward, which I think is so smart. So well, smart. thank you. And so, you. and so needed really. And yes. Like, so I'd, much love so. to, I'd love to go to a chiropractor and talk all over. I mean, this would be wonderful. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting excited. It's, it's great. <laughs> Well, it's great. And, there, and really, um, many, many chiropractors are, are passionate, as passionate about personal development and health and nutrition and exercise. It's, you know, a matter of finding the right one. Yes. But, uh, but yes, thank you so much. And, and I appreciate that. And I think when we get feedback like that, we know we're in the right spot. So mm. I appreciate your energy mm. toward that. Oh, no, absolutely. Because uh, I know that when you find that sweet spot, it's... Um, oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's just yeah. There's no word for it. Yeah. It's, it's sweet. It, that's all you can say. It is. It's a yeah. It's a, yeah. It's it's really wonderful. And you know, the whole concept of what we're talking about. You know, this monetizing and, and your your vision and your ideas is just so incredibly rewarding. And I do enco- encourage anyone who's even thinking about it. It is a lot of work and it is a lot of energy. But the the rewards, the return on investment, if you will, is just exceptional. So I I just absolutely am filled with encouragement for all of your listeners today thank you so much for that heather and with that such beautiful words there words of wisdom and gems (laughs) of gold there i'd like to end the interview and say thank you so much for joining us on monetizing your mission and sharing the wisdom because really guys heather is like the gal who's been there and done that so the immersion of and i can't stress that enough guys because when you think of your gp when you think of your physio when you think of people who have got a brick and mortar yeah Heather's had that and now yeah. she's taken it and just completely remolded, reshuffled the same passion and that's what's possible and that's what's yes. so exciting for Heather to be here because she is, she is it. She, she's done that and I'd really encourage you to go and take up those free gifts with Heather so that you yeah. can ask her, you can strategize with her because she is the person to really talk about that and get you set to where you need to be. Absolutely. And, and Rita, thank you for coordinating this because putting, collaborating all these people together is such a gift to your listeners and, and how absolutely wonderful they have the opportunity to come through this vehicle and, and learn so much. So thank you. Thank you, guys. So you can see the, the warmth and passion of this beautiful woman. So <laughs> thank you so much, Heather. I really appreciate it once again. And to viewers, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I look forward to catching you on the next episode of Monetize Your Mission. Catch you soon. Thank you so much.